Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. And I just am so excited about my roses. They are opening up fuller and fuller, and I just want to catch them in each of the different stages. So indulge me with this opportunity to show off my Eden Climbing Rose, how she is so beautiful here on the deck. But not just her, I also have the Westerland Rose, which I had planted, I think, two years ago yeah and I got that rose actually both of them from um, Home Depot and bought them as bare root roses and put them in the ground and um, I'm just enjoying them the reason why I'm extremely excited about this Eden climbing rose is because earlier in the season it had a more of a chartreuse uh, look at the leaves. The leaves were turning yellow and I was concerned that my rose would die off but then I got it some compost and yes miracle Grow added that to it and uh, really dug it into the the um, soil and watered it in well and then I started to see the leaves turning back this beautiful green and the buds coming forth and so I am just excited about um, having blooms. Check out this rose. Isn't that beautiful, this coloring? It's gorgeous. Yes, it is. And I love the leaf. It has a strong leaf color and just a beautiful soft rose. Um, I love how it has um, the petal structure and how it's very soft and beautiful but bold in its coloring. Let me show you another one. Now that's its bud form um, and then I showed you um, how it looks. Let's check the back. See that? It has like a yellow. Yeah. It's more of in the yellow family than red and uh, has tinges of yellow inside absolutely beautiful and so it is different from my other rose bush that I have here and um, let me just show you what I'm talking about I have this other rose here this that is called um, Cornelia and it is a climber as well and you can see its color it is does have that salmony look too as well but it's still different from Westerland isn't that beautiful so to me they're like cousins and that's the reason why I bought it uh, because I want them to kind of mingle with one another um, in the garden so let me give you a closer look here at Cornelia and she, I planted her the same time that I planted um, the Eden Climbing Rose and put her in this side. And she is highly fragrant as a rose and a climber. And let me give you a closer, even closer look. Now, isn't this very much similar to Westerland? Check out the inside. She has a yellow base as well and the petal structure is similar but she's more lighter in color and I love this I'm so excited the other good thing about Cornelia Rose 
is that she's highly fragrant. When I walk through the garden, I just smell this fragrance and it's just so intoxicating. She is definitely a beautiful rose and she uh, just is so full and luscious and I even have rose hips from her. So in the fall and in through the winter, during the winter, she continues to have rose hips or seeds that the squirrels love as well as the birds. So she's food for uh, the critters that are in my <laughs> She provides some food for the birds and they love hanging out here because of her. As you can see my deck is still a workstation for me and I have a lot of plants and seedlings that need to get into the ground. I have my vegetables here that I'm waiting for them to at least have two leaves um, a lot of the squash and the pumpkin and uh, the squash family there, they have um, developing one leaf, uh, one true leaf. But I, I would love them to get a little bit more um, solid, I think. And then I'm going to put them in the ground. Who knows, I might be inspired this weekend to plant them all out, which I think that's what I'm going to do. So uh, continue to follow me as I work on my planting of my veggies yes and then here is my um, cosmos and these are the uh, pacific giant cosmos that i'm going to be putting in the ground and here are not cosmos zinnias zinnias these are zinnias sorry these are the cosmos here yes and i got it from the american seed these are single sensation mixed cosmos and they are looking healthy and really great and this is amaranth amaranth here and I bleeding let's see what did I write down amaranth amaranths um, yeah love lies bleeding Yes, it's good to make tags, right? <laughs> and that's my um, calla lilies that are coming up. And to be specific about these zinnias, the zinnias are the cactus California mix. Yeah, let me put this back here so that I can remember what they are. And um, I have my uh, orange mint, which is doing really well. And if you didn't see that video, you can check out the video when I put it in a pot. And I had started that from a cutting uh, and uh, then planted it up. And here it is. This is doing very well. And then this here, this is Cleome. Cleome. And uh, I used the bottle the winter bottle sewing method to start this these Cleome and look at how well they're growing I'm gonna soon have to put them in the ground I have some already in the ground but I decided that I'd let this patch grow up a little bit more then I have some cucumbers there and now this here this is the oriental poppy I'm gonna need to uh, separate these and seed them up. See, I, I separated these here. I mean, pot them up, pot them up, pot them up. I started to do that, but um, I became a little bit nervous because they were so small. But uh, now I think they're ready to be separated. So that is a video to come up. <laughs> our next video to pop, pot them up or put them in the ground, one or the other. And then over here, this is my basil. Look at how my basil has grown in such a short time. I'm going to take one of these and uh, plant the basil with the tomatoes. I have two tomato patches and I'm going to plant the basil in between them. But I also am going to leave uh, 
one of these up here uh, so that I can just run out from the kitchen and cut basil. I really do love basil. And uh, these uh, are seeded from the American seed pack from the Dollar Tree. And every year it's just been so good to have fresh basil and a lot of it. It's like a cut and come again. I cut and it comes again. This is my spearmint um, that I also uh, started from a root cut, from a, a cutting and grew roots by putting it in the water and then transplanting it here into this its own part. Now this is something new. Now, you see this bowl? This bowl came from out in the garden, in the pot in the garden. And I, trans I transferred um, other plants in here. I actually shopped in my garden. Um, I looked around and I saw the annuals that weren't doing so well and decided that I was going to give them uh, a change of location and put them here in the pot and right now they are doing fantastic uh, my pansies here and uh, petunias and then this is a coleus and uh, oh, what is this a geranium geranium so um, I, I said to myself I should make a video of me creating this bowl but <laughs> I was so much into it that I just got distracted and I said no, let me just do what I have to do and I'll show you all later so and I really like how it looks because it matches so well with the cushion uh, and uh, I love its new location here now this this is um, from the winter sewing and uh, it's the perennial mix from the American seed packet that I had and I decided just to leave them here in this container and see what I get and then whatever plants are um, you know that I love that I will then transplant them into the ground in the garden and they're perennials so that means that they will come back next year and so far so good I believe this is a bachelor button um, I'm trying to identify some of them uh, but so far I know that this is a bachelor button and I think this is probably black eyed Susan that looks like a black eyed Susan so we will see it's going to be a mystery but we will see what comes up here in this bowl everything is just coming together and looking so beautiful because it has been raining for the week here this f first couple of days of June we have been getting rain here in the Boston area and my plants are loving it the nights have been cool as well and so everything has had a chance to grow I've also see, uh, seen a change too in what um, is happening in the beds. Before, if you've been following me, um, the purple sensation um, alliums were the showstopper here, but now they are turning to seed. And the rhododendron plants, they were uh, uh, shrubs, they were flowering beautifully. It was such a great combination with this um, woodland plant here that is native to my region and I love the yellow flowers with the uh, purple they complement one another real well and so this bed is just about um, done and I have to think about what I want to add to this bed to uh, continue the color scheme I at one point had had bee balm in here uh, but it's um, I don't see it so that is something that I'm going to have to consider what next for this bed uh, we do have a lot of, um, of Johnny jump pops or violas here in this uh, bed surrounding it 
And I do have dead nettle, which is so pretty. Here, this ground cover. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And it matched so well with the rhododendron blooms, flowers. And so that is a good thing there. But I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this bed. I am so pleased with um, how it turned out. It's first start, it also had some tulips in it. And then the next step was the alliums and the rhododendrons. And um, what next for it is, is the question. So we'll see how things go. I might get a shrub or something and put in the middle right there. Uh, a different shrub. I have a, um, I do have a hydrangea uh, back there, but it's not doing so well. Um, so that's the next question. Maybe a rose, a rose that can uh, handle shade uh, because it's right under my mighty oak tree here and this other tree um, that needs to get cut down sometime. But look at that, the width of that, that oak tree. Isn't that massive? I know it's a couple of hundred years old. Has to be. Um, and it's a male tree because it has all those tassels. Uh, it really covered the ground here. It made it very messy for a while, but I'm glad to have it. I love this rose. This rose is one of the first roses that I planted in my garden and for a long time it signified the beginning of the rose season for me. Uh, uh, I believe that it is um, part of a rugosa. It's a rugosa and it's a French rose. Uh, one of the older roses. Um, I used to know its name <laughs> but I don't remember. If I look it up I will put it there. But it is a beautiful rose and it's very old-fashioned and perfume, perfumey. What I love about this rose is that it is a self-cleaner that it cleans itself. It's beautiful. It's a self cleaner. And uh, this is the time when it gives its full um, flush of blooms. It's a spurter as well. It spreads underneath and uh, you'll see patches of it. It gets, at times it will get black spot real easy, but if you cut it back hard, it will uh, flush out and have fresh new blooms. So yeah, see uh, what it does here? It's a self cleaner. So I don't have to go around deadheading it, which I love. It just releases its petals uh, like that. And it's so pretty um, and smells so good. It's so perfumey. Um, it starts off like this, nice and tight. And I love the color. And then it gets lighter and lighter. And then it starts to uh, drop its petals. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The rose that I partnered it with is a knockout rose. And I play, planted this knockout rose about three years ago. And now it's come into its own. Uh, it's a knockout rose, but I love the deep red color. Um, and I love the shape of this rose as well. It's different from my other one that's next to it. And they're very deep in its the colors um, are uh, competing a little bit with one another but I love it I love the fact that they can hold their own because it makes them stand out you know that there are two different types of roses here in the garden and it makes you pay attention to both of them because we are making this a festive garden this year with multiple colors especially for the summertime we have uh, placed in the bowl here a, uh, just a, a mix of different colors that will tie everything together
So there are petunias, impatiens, pansies, geraniums, also um, another uh, annual as well. Uh, we have the white, purple, pink, fuchsia, red, all of the different colors here um, in this bowl, floral bowl. And uh, it's just very beautiful here in the garden. I have to give a shout out to my husband because he has been so diligent and excited about the garden um, right now. He's actually more excited about the garden than I, <laughs> I am at times because he's out here uh, for hours now just um, cutting the grass and edging the borders. Uh, just diligent at it and I think that he's found it to be a really peaceful spot for him and he's allowed me to um, work on putting in the, the flowers and so forth and he's been just buying me flowers to put in um, he's excited about the garden um, so I can't complain uh, I can't complain because it looks so beautiful. The garden is just beautiful. I'm extremely excited about this bed right here. These uh, connecting beds. I am excited about them for one because I love my beautiful amenities and the ground covers that are here. The uh, bishop weed along with my ground cover, Pachysandra, um, and also the white amenities. They are so pretty. They came out in full-fledged force this year. I love the fern. The fern isn't uh, too high yet. Uh, my f husband ringed, put a ring around of impatience around the border here, and uh, I just love it. Inside of this beautiful uh, bed is one of my hydrangeas, and this is called um, uh, Nico Blue. I believe it's Nico Blue, and I got this hydrangea. Well, mm, I would have to say 10 years ago now, 10 years, and it's been here, and it's some years it blooms um, profusely with huge blue uh, mop head flowers, and some years if there's a, a late cold spell, I lose blooms, and this year it's been a mix. Um, you can see that some of the branches there and some of the blooms uh, did not survive that cold but I'm so happy that many of them did so I am going to get flowers here on some of the branches and I am so pleased with that because um, it's very much a part of the summer garden to have the blue mop head flowers here in the garden and especially in this place of uh, space of prominence because the white amenities will be finished and it will be their turn the mop head flowers to um, whole center stage you would say in my garden so right now you can see a lot of color with the roses and the hydrangea it's just beautiful
So you can see Cornelia Rose here, uh, where she is in terms of the deck and from this, this viewpoint. And uh, she's full of buds, looking quite beautiful. Oh, and then you can see what I'm talking about as far as the seed heads. But yet there are a lot of flowers, blooms to come. And it just fills this whole space here. At the bottom I have Barberry and um, also the um, Arborvitaes which are growing in here. Some fern and then I have the geranium here, the perennial geranium and they are just about finished. I also have another beautiful hydrangea and this hydrangea is called bridal bouquet. It comes up white, some beautiful blooms and I'm so glad to see that it has flowers here. Oh, I'm going to have flowers, yes, beautiful white, and I love also the uh, hosta that's in this bed. The reason why I came over here is so that you can see the roses, that rose here, my Westerland rose. This rose here, that is uh, curly pink. She's beautiful as well. In bud form and in flower. Yeah, but back to this um, rose here, I just want you to see how it is intermingling with the uh, climber. I'm glad that Westerland is actually um, growing out so that you could see her well from this vantage point and that the pink um, um, eating climber is at uh, the deck side because uh, you can then um, it's almost like a wrap around of that salmony orange color from Cornelia on that side coming around to the orange continuing that orange color here on this side of the deck For more videos, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time right here in Catherine's Garden. Bye.